Hey everybody, I'm so excited to be watching this movie. I hope that you guys have had a great day since filming this. I don't really know what uh, order these videos are gonna be coming out of, but because we're on a bit of a Lin Miranda, Lin Manuel Miranda, Lin Manuel Miranda craze, <laughs> I decided to give a movie that I am very excited about a shot. And I have been waiting to see this movie for so freaking long. As someone who grew up with musical theater, Jonathan Larson is someone who has made such a tremendous impact on the Broadway community. I am not a musical theater actress, but I have seen the impact of what Rent the Musical has done for so many of my dear, dear friends. I have personally not, never actually seen Rent. I have heard the soundtrack many, many times, but I've never been given the privilege to see the Broadway musical live or have I seen the film. So if you guys are interested, please comment down below and let me know because I would love to. However, I'm very excited about one, seeing Andrew Garfield work as this incredibly influential figure in the Broadway community and the years that it takes to bi to build a musical. Guys, Broadway musicals take freaking years. Amazing musicals take time and sometimes it takes everything it takes your blood sweat and tears as a creative to build that and to get that off the ground i'm honestly stoked and so excited and i can't wait to share it with you guys if you guys don't know me hi my name is clarice i'm an actress that was trained in new york city and i make videos where i watch movies talk about films and tv sometimes makeup and hair but just talk about all the things that make stories so great so if any of that sounds like your cup of tea you can check on the links down below to see some of my other videos you can consider subscribing, ring the bell, so you get notified on all my latest videos. And I hope that you guys enjoy. I am so excited. So without further ado, let's get into it. I know, I know so many of you wanted me to do In the Heights and I promise that's coming. But since watching the film, I, as someone who loves Broadway and the, has the Broadway musical mean so much to me and, me, and be a huge Lin Manuel Miranda fan, I think he's one of the best uh, musical storytellers that we have today. There were some changes that were made in the film, particularly to one of my favorite characters that just left not the best taste about the film or where they were going. So I wasn't able to actually complete it. However, because I love this story and I know that it deserves um, a second chance, as someone who loves the Broadway musical, those changes really left an impact and it left the story lacking. However, what I did think of that may be good for you guys, because again, this story deserves to be talked about, the musical deserves to be seen, but I thought about possibly doing an analysis video where I discuss exactly the differences on why some of the changes within the film change and adjust the story in a way that may or may not be less effective. I was trying to just find ways where I don't want this channel to be something that's just me negatively critiquing things. I don't want to be the kind of creator that just puts that negativity out there. And because of that, I still am trying to figure out what I want to do with In the Heights. So if maybe an analysis video very similar to what I did with Zack Snyder, it's something that y'all would be interested in. I would feel a lot more comfortable just delivering that because I know that then I could put a much more appreciative spin on it. And discuss more about why it is that the Broadway musical is so good and a lot of the good things that the film did. It's just in regards to a reaction, I'm not quite sure why I said, unless you guys want me to give it another chance and react it for you, I would be more than happy to. But without further ado, outside of that, let's get into it. Oh, look at him. Look at him, Míralo. I'm John. Míralo. I'm a musical theater writer. Me, the last of my species. Guys. So, 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 you know, lately I've been hearing this sound. Everywhere I go, like a... T t t like a time bomb in some cheesy B-movie or Saturday morning cartoon. The fuse has been lit. The clock counts down the seconds as the flame gets closer and closer closer until all at once he is doing an amazing job vocally the vocal work on that accent the way that he's speaking is so spot on it's very theatrical it's very close to jonathan this is jonathan larson's story happy anniversary i love you so much before the tony awards before the pulitzer prize before we dedicate this opening night and Oh, man. We lost. 
trust him. Everything you're about to see is true. Oh, I'm so excited. Except for the parts Jonathan made up. I am so excited. Gosh, you can just tell the respect and care that went into this. The date is January 26th, 1990. The setting, the barren, unfashionable no man's land between Soho and Greenwich oh, Village. Oh, gosh. I have two keyboards, a Macintosh hey. computer, a cat. Oh. An impressive collection of compact yep. discs, cassettes, Had those and myself. records of other people's <gasps> Judas music. Judas nice. Bookshelves sagging under the weight of plays and novels I didn't write. I have an original dystopian rock musical that I have spent the last eight years Told of my you. life writing. Takes so long. And rewriting. And rewriting. Yep. <laughs> I have rejection letters from every major and minor producer, theater company, record label, and film studio in existence. And in just over a week, I will be 30 years old. Older than Stephen Sondheim when he had his first Broadway show. Older than Paul McCartney when he wrote his last song with John Lennon. By the time my parents were 30, they already had two kids. They had careers with steady paychecks, a mortgage, and in eight days, my youth will be over forever. And what exactly do I have to show for myself? Gosh, I love it. Happy birthday. Stop the I know that he worked to learn how to sing. And that is so, so admirable. kinds of arrangements really changed and moved Broadway so much. Like the speed, the pace it, of everything. You're just feeling the energy. It's just building up and building up and building up. Then you have, I have to pause it, but then you have like the crash chorus of bass and guitar and drums and it's just hitting you and it's giving you this burst of energy. It's a great way to open this movie. I'm just so pumped because you can just see the level of care that went into the musicality of this film. And given that it's about a man who created a musical, it's just different layers of ways that you can see that the people behind this project really, really wanted to make something special. Please, guys, share if you know any tidbits about the making of Rent the um, or anything I would love to hear. Well, it's good that you're not putting too much pressure on it or anything. <laughs> But it's true though, it's like you get to a certain age She's so and beautiful. you stop being a writer who waits tables and you, you become a waiter with a hobby. Boo Boo, you need to ask yourself in this moment, are you letting yourself be led by fear or by love? Oh. You just quit? Well, no, I, I just quit, quit. I gave, I gave my notice. That's exactly the same thing. No, I have two weeks left. I'm allowing myself to be led by love. Aww. You know, Rosa's got another client, Craig Carnelia. This is Rosa, your agent, who hasn't returned your calls in a year. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. So she invited the entire Hi, theater industry to Craig's musical workshop mm -hmm. last year. And by intermission, some producer had already written him a check for $10,000. That very likely can happen. You have to think like that. Well, it's, it's the beauty of workshops. No, baby, it's expensive to make art here. <laughs> Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> that's Hell yeah, it is. All right. How are you going to pay for this, Jonathan? Vanessa! I'm so impressed. Wicked witches, Bobby Fields, old men behind the curtain, Tiger Lilies, Ruby Slippers, Clock is ticking, that's for Sunday. Hey!
So as we move on, you guys will notice, I think this is going to be that kind of musical. This has been, I didn't even have this with Encanto. So I have a background in conducting and being a drum major for from being in marching band for many, many years. And it's just something still to me, I don't do this for attention or effect. It's just within me because I'm such a musician at heart. But when there's music on that's just that lively, I just, I want, I have to just conduct it um, because it's just something that just feels so lively. I love embodying the music um, through hands and my body. And so that was just giving me such a just a visceral like feeling of like, wow, I just, gosh, I could picture the band, I could picture the music and just telling them like when to go. Um, because sometimes when you just have that kind of lively music, you know exactly where it's going. You can almost predict in advance where it's going and when it hits like that end cutoff, oh my gosh, it's one of the best feelings ever. Um, I love it and I love that this movie gave me that within its first opening number. So I'm so excited. I am so, so excited to see where we go. From the airport to a conference room and then back to the airport three hours later. Sounds amazing. Yeah. Michael was an amazing actor. Mm. Yeah, he was the lead of every play in high school, college, and then we moved to New York. Ooh. I am sick of waking up at five to get in line outside the equity <gasps> building and wait for days, praying that the director actually even agrees to see anyone that's in the union. And then Thanks. when I find the room, I sing, I don't know, six measures if I'm lucky before they cut me off and call me the wrong name, Juan. Dímelo, dímelo. And then a week later, he got a job at a fancy advertising company, making high five figures, healthcare, dental. Mm. He never looked back. You know, for someone who's broke, Damn. you could probably spend a little bit less on party planning. Mira well, tu. What is the point of money if you're not going to spend it on the people that you love? <laughs> yeah, except you don't have Wow, any. guys, there's... Oh, there's so much to unpack with that. Um, I'm going to keep it short just because I really want to see the rest of the movie. But that is such a reality for so many talented, talented people. This industry is hard. This and what he talks about, well, I've never stood outside the equity building just because, again, I'm not musical theater. Um, I have stood my fair share in auditions, waiting and waiting and waiting um, to barely be seen or to <laughs> get up. Uh, embarrass myself and just the constant level of rejection that you receive put out to in comparison to the amount of effort that it takes to still be rejected and the thing is sometimes it's not even because you're not good you're just as talented as everyone else in that in that line it's just it could be a multitude of factors that you have no control over it can be so difficult especially because as creatives we still want to make a living like just because we want to be storytellers doesn't mean that we don't have bills to pay especially living in new york i had to do that myself for so many years but trying to sustain yourself while working a day job and trying to be an actor on top of the constant rejection the level of investment you have to put into cab rides or trips or subway fares or into being fit so that you can run the blocks and blocks and blocks it takes because the subway station crashed down and you have an audition in 10 minutes and it's like 10 blocks away and you're booking it and then you have to refresh yourself and make sure that you don't smell bad when you go into the thing <gasps> speaking from possible experience but all of that takes so much determination grit discipline tenacity it's not easy and if an opportunity like Pookie here to make a living earn a good amount of money that provides you security stability there's nothing wrong with that not everyone gets that opportunity or chance I've seen a lot of wonderfully talented people to make career changes for a multitude of reasons very valid as i understand but as someone who's still trying to pursue that for myself genuinely holding on to hope and putting work in it does break my heart sometimes just to see that god i understand chuleta <laughs> te entiendo man Puki, te entiendo this has been sitting here for a week. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I see Barry on it. Pretty soon you won't have me around to remind you to pay your bills on time. How will I ever survive? That's actually a very real question. Have you found a new roommate yet? I've been a little busy. You know, my workshop is next week. What workshop? Hmm. <laughs> that was funny. It was funny. I love the subtleties that he adds what to his face. Uh, curtains at eight. Oh, mm. I'm so excited about what they I do with the that. Dancing's amazing, but the music sucks. Ooh. Good job, Lynn. So far, the way that they're choosing to film this, obviously, it's not just Lynn; Susan it's the cinematographer. In the Midwest. She went to college to study biology. But the way that they're choosing to show it reminds me a lot of she fell in love what Hamilton does. With modern dance um, it reminds me a lot of what Hamilton does with its choreography, um, but on stage. And I love that now the camera is allowing us to get a deeper look into that, like in the f movement of of that modern um, modern dance piece right there. I love that the camera is just adjusting to give us different focal points. It's one of my favorite things to see done with movement, especially in film. And uh, very often I feel like film just keeps it static um, where you have a musical number and they just keep it static. You just see a bunch of great dancing, but it's just, you're looking at it as if you were sitting on a stage. And I'm like, you have the medium of film. You can do so much with it, do something with it. So I, yeah. I'm happy to see that they're that Lynn is making directorial choices this way too. Well, he loved making a fuss, especially about you. Mm. She's beautiful. Oh, look at him. he's adorable. Everything we've done for him. Stop. He walks away. Freddie, look, I'm leaving you my mixtapes. Oh. You can play them in remembrance of me. Oh, Jonathan Larson's famous moon dance diner mix. <laughs> Who doesn't love show tunes with their French toast? Actually, it's not just show tunes. It's a very eclectic mix. <laughs> Someone's very touchy about the mixtapes. Apparently. Okay, listen, I'm happy <laughs> for you. I really am. Oh, yeah? I'm also extremely bitter and jealous and envious and sort of hateful towards you right now. <laughs> I mean, he's getting out. And mm. you're going to be next. Oh, yeah. Well, I got a call back last week. Oh, great for a cruise. Hey, a cruise. hey, that can be money. That's it's employment. Employment. So pretty much everything. T cell count is good. My doctor feels cautiously optimistic. Oh, okay. no. Good. You look great. Oh, no. Are we getting there? Oh, thank you. I know. Oh, no. But for the cruise, I'm going to have to. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, he's talking about T cell counts. What? No. Gosh, that. I can only imagine how difficult of a time that was through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, figuring out this terrible like, disease, knowing so little about it, and the many, many lives lost and impacted. I'm really nervous, because you know? they all oh, seem so lovely. The I'm really mm -hmm. nervous mm -hmm. that every, so many of them are going to die. Yeah. Uh, what do you do? I'm the future of musical theater, Scott. A. Welcome. I'm gonna get another drink. That guy's hilarious. Sometimes it takes that level of ridiculous faith. You will look ridiculous. But hey, no one who ever changed anything was seen as sane. Don't forget the neighbors, Michelle. I am so impressed. You can see the level of theatrical training that Andrew went into. This stuff is hard. This is not easy to do. I am so impressed he was able to get to this point. I heard uh, in Jacob's Pillow they're hiring new teachers for the dance school. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I work a couple hours a week, and then the rest of the time is yours. Free studio space whenever you want. Hey, whoa. Can we just talk mm. for a second? Mm. Can we just talk about how amazing you are tonight? Aww. Thank you. She was. She was amazing. I could just watch you. Dancing that piece forever. was fantastic. I was thinking maybe applying hmm? to the job in Jacob's Pillow. 
Again, stability, security. I mean, obviously jobs don't always provide security, but as opposed to going from job to job to job. You're gonna move to the brochures? And not have to work 30 hours a week doing word processing to pay the rent, why not? You are such You've a- You've gotta be freezing. Take this. Girl, you gotta be cold. Chica, por qué tienes ese traje? Yo, chica, está frío. ¿Qué andas haciendo? We're in a hurry to get back inside. I mean, I guess if you do something to get warm. Oh no. So this is just for the summer? No. Oh, it's permanent. Girl, was that your plan to ease into it? By easing into it? Why is she doing this right now? Home girl, like Chica. And she says, I want you to come with me. What did she say? Chica. Oh my. Yo. What apartment building has a parking attendant? Right. <laughs> Fresh flowers in the lobby. An old white lady with a tiny dog. Is this real? Yo. Life? The accuracy. No more. Literally. <laughs> six flights of stairs or throwing down the key because there is no buzzer. Or you don't actually have technically the key, so you press every single button for every single apartment room, hoping that someone buzzes you in. No more. Because you ain't got no money to make a spare key. No more. <laughs> 30 dishes in the one and only sea. Yo. <laughs> Hello to my walk in closets. Tidy as Park Avenue. I could get used to you. Chuso, chico. ¿Cuánto dinero está ganando? Over sleeping people before you get out the door of your own building. Gosh, there was at one point I lived with five people in a two bedroom. Yeah, that's accurate. Or when I lived in an apartment suite in acting school where people came in and out all the time so you could have one person in your five bedroom suite or you could have 20 people having a party that crashed there then you you're just trying to get to the bathroom i don't know if y'all can hear that but it kind of sounded like that Hello, dear Mr. yes Having a dishwasher that works, that works. Oh. The yelling, stand clear of the closing doors, and it's always a pissed off guy. <laughs> it's like always, <laughs> or it's a sassy dude that doesn't give a. <laughs> Like, the best thing, though, sometimes, every now and then, something wild happens in the subway, as it usually does. But then, like, the operator will make, like, subtle, sassy comments about it. <laughs> you're telling me that in the five years you've been writing this musical, no one else has told you that you're missing a song for Elizabeth in the second act. No one? Okay, I'm lying. Mm -hmm. One person did say that. For years... I was a part of this musical theater writing workshop. Reminds me that I need to find writing workshops. If anyone knows any, link some below. I need help with my writing. <laughs> Watch one of us present what we've been working on to a panel of, well, real writers. Makes sense. The night I presented, people began to buzz as soon as we walked through the door. Really? Is it really him? It was. Who? I had no idea that they would have that kind of um, they would have him in this movie um, but given the very very recent loss of Sondheim so much of his work has been so impactful to me and so many people that I love the man was a genius and I am very scared for what he told Jonathan Larson <laughs> maybe it was a push maybe it was good but may you rest in peace I have to say, I, I, I disagree pretty strongly, Walter. I think this is a musical that knows exactly what it is. Yes. 
Yes, I, of course, yes, the absolutely. The world you've created is really original. It's fascinating. The problem is... Sigue hablando. Sigue hablando, Steven. ...to follow the emotional thread. The details distract us from connecting with the characters. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes, we're on the same page here. That's exactly <laughs> how I felt. We're saying the same thing. Just uh. differently. But the music, okay? I'm sorry. The music just wasn't there. I actually, I thought the songs were swell. Hey, no, okay. yes. let's yes. go. Individual songs. I Sigue diciendo. Like the man sings at the end of the first act. First rate lyric and tune. Well done. Yeah. First lyric and tune. Well done. Those five words were enough to keep me going for the next two years. <gasps> You're missing a song for the young woman. Yes. Uh, Elizabeth, it's the turning point in the show. Your protagonist is either going to go in this direction or that direction. Someone has to wake him up, shake some sense into him. Okay. <laughs> That's amazing. They'll have a piano. I wrote a rock score. So, at the very least, I'll need a synth and drums and guitar. A great song should sound great without any instruments. Mm. Okay. Let's just do mm. the song with acapella. Debatable. Uh, they want an answer by Wednesday. So I was wondering if we could maybe talk about it. Uh, for the job? Oh. oh, boy. I'm very nervous yeah. for this uh, um, situation and their relationship. Uh, talk about it tomorrow. Because uh, I, I have to finish this song right now. I mean, girl, I understand the priority. Sure. But also, like, you sure you're girl, sure. Sure. please be understanding. I mean, she seems understanding. She's good. You don't seem sure. Good night, Jonathan. Okay. okay. Good night. Um, I'll be in. Communication! I'm doing it! I'm doing yeah. it! Yeah! Yeah! Can some of these, can some of these. Almost there! In. Done. Now let's see how it looks so far. Room. What? Freddy, shit. I should go to the hospital. When am I gonna go to the hospital? I need to write. When am I gonna write? I need to talk to Susan. I need to see Freddy. I should call Susan. I need to leave. I need to walk out that door and go. But it's 9.30 on a Sunday morning at the Moondance Diner. I'm not going anywhere. Hey, Lynn! Hey, Lynn! Te pille. Richard. Richard. <gasps> How many? Cap. No, Richard Cap. Adrian is shit! Ah! That man is incredible. Thank you for your patience. You said an omelet with no yolk. <gasps> Why, you're just a waiter. Literally, somebody read me that. Major vomit. Who else are we getting? Who else are we getting? Are you Can we get two more mimosas? <gasps> oh my god! I can't! I cannot! This is amazing! It's... Who else? Que mas? Que mas? Yo, if we are about to get all of these incredible Broadway stars to sing this song... Sunday. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! Dame toda la gente. Lleva toda la gente. Llévalo. I don't know what else there is to say about that. My internal like self is just like <laughs> there was so many amazing people in one place and they got them all for this movie. <laughs> I told you I needed a band. You need the band. It's a hundred dollars for every musician. Oh, no, it is, it is. Tuesday. I need to give them the decision about the job by tomorrow. Mm. Sir, I'm, I'm unaware if you can take a break. I can't 
You know, the actors take breaks. I don't, I don't have any breaks. I just don't know what I'm gonna do. So. Mm. Um, I get you, can, girl. Can, I get can you. Back from the I get you, girl. So but like, can we, can we, can we talk about this tonight? I just relate too much to Jonathan <laughs> to his situation. I'm sorry. I completely understand how frustrating it must be. I would do exactly what you do and feel the same way. I'm sorry. Dang. <laughs> Dang it. Te entiendo. Te entiendo. Pero también mira lo que está haciendo el man, man. Míralo. I could really use your advice on some things. Hey, Michael. I'm sorry. Can I, can I call Ooh. you back later? I'm just, I'm right in the middle. I'm nervous. Something's going on with Michael, oh, too. Uh, hey, hey, you could have called first. She, she did. She, I just she did. did. I mean, it's true. Susan deserves better. She deserves better. Tim yeah. Communication! Right, Susan, I'm, I'm right. Communication! I'm gonna write a great American musical in the next 10 minutes. Thank you for- Lady Gaga wrote some of her best hits in 10 minutes. Billie Eilish and Finnish wrote some of their best hits in 10 minutes. Some things only take 10 minutes. Taylor Swift's All Too Well only took 10 minutes! <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? What do you think it means? We present you with... Scenes from a modern romance. As told in song. Oh boy. Communication would have fixed this whole thing. Oh my god. Now it's out in the open. You're thinking about how you can turn this into a song, aren't you? Now it's off our chest. You know what, Jonathan? I'm done. Oh. Two hours of this for one extra musician. <laughs> start by you just throwing out some ideas when you hear me say the word America. George Washington. Excellent. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. An open road at sunset. Ooh. Wind in your hair. Nothing in your way except horizon. That is beautiful, Mr. Larson. Wow, okay. That goes on the board. Looking out on a field. Oh, and I look out and I see the little bunnies and the little squirrelies. And the beating heart of the nation. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Whoa. Absolutely. That's absolutely what it is. How? Just get paid. Just because he's a I poet. I used to this. I could get paid for this. I, I could get health care. <gasps> health care! <laughs> oh, so God. What we're looking at is a tasteless, odorless oh, chemical no. compound that I'm very will nervous. be used as a fat substitute in cooking. The there animals. are some side effects associated with the product that I've been instructed to tell you about. So it's okay. skin scales, um, full hair loss, hair, eyebrows, eyelashes. This could be the rest of my life. Oh, God! <laughs> number of users there were reports of toxic shock syndrome resulting in a brief hospitalization no, no big deal. he's gonna <laughs> pick it up substitute <laughs> substitute it's a joke it's not funny well maybe not to you but i recommended you john i put my mm. name on the line for you Mm. Tell them I had a stroke. It isn't funny. Mm. This is my life. No. Yeah. It's not your life. It's advertising. It's it's figuring out. It's how still to his life. You and spend my life caring about driving the right car and wearing the right suits and living in a doorman. Why building. shouldn't I want those things, John? Not yes. Not have the options you do. All the things that you take for granted. What? Like what? Like a life with a person you love. Do you know what I would give for that? You, you turn your nose up at it. If that's what you want, what's stopping you? What's stopping me? How about Jesse mm. Helms and the moral majority? How about the people that run this country? I can't get married. I can't have kids. Half of our friends are, are dying. dying. And the other half are scared to death that they are next. So I'm sorry for getting a nice car, John. I'm sorry for moving into an apartment with central heating. I'm sorry for enjoying my life while I still have time. I got to go. Oh Thanks. no. You don't want to take the subway? Come take the subway. I'd rather walk. Michael. Michael. Yeah.
Are we excited? Rosa? The presentation. You remembered the presentation. Remembered it. I got every producer in town coming. <laughs> <laughs> so it better be good. Rosa yeah. responded. It's, uh, it's going to be <laughs> amazing. Let's see if we can't get a bidding war started on this musical of yours. What do you think? musical to which I have devoted my youth is about to be put on public display for every, every producer, producer in New York. York. I haven't written a single note or a single lyric of the most important song in the show. I have no electricity. Dude. My best friend is furious with me. My girlfriend isn't speaking to me. And there is only one thing I can think of to do. Swim. <laughs> Atmospheric piano interlude. It's <laughs> turning 30. <laughs> nice. Not even nine. The presentation doesn't start till ten. <laughs> Aww. That's good. Oh. Cool. Oh. <laughs> okay. Thank you for being here. Wild horses, John. You know that. Hmm. Oh, thank you. I really hope Sondheim shows up. That would just warm my heart if he shows up. Hi, welcome. I'm Jonathan Larson. Oh. Oh. No, hey, hey, well, that, you don't have to do that. Uh, hey, that's so right. Hey, que le importa a los otros. Estás ahí para tu amigo. Thank you so much for calling. Well, you already left six messages. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, have you heard anything Not yet? Honey, uh, everyone is telling me the same thing. That Jonathan Lawson. I can't wait to see what he does next. <gasps> uh, what I do next? What about Super? I always told you it was a tough sell. So what am I supposed to do now? You start writing the next one. And after you finish that one, start on the next. It be like that sometimes. Shit, that's why I struggle with that too with freaking videos. I'm trying to just put out the next thing. Because nothing's, nothing's stable. Just keep doing the next one. I'm so grateful to all of you that um, through the Encanto reaction, many of you have found me. But now it's about the next one and the next one because, you know, I'm still trying to create a living. Stan. No, you don't understand. I'm running out of time. You are not running out of time. You don't oh, know anything about tell him, tell him, tell him. I know it. It's what? too much about all that he was saying and how he was treating him. You just knew. You just knew. You, you didn't know because you couldn't pay attention. 
Oh, really? Just a few days? Who knows? Oh, no, that's how... Like lucky people do. Oh, no, he has a... <gasps> Live a year? Longer, even? Anyway, I think I might know a thing or two about running out of time. The sky is darkening. I want it to stop. I want it all to stop! Great visual. Audio editing. Great. Without getting too into it, I, um, just hearing the end of that idea of him imagining his dear friend who, and making a vow to keep going, and make his stories, make his songs, make his music, make his art, when you feel like you can't, you don't have the strength, you're going through so much pain. I had my audition from my school, my acting school, in New York City. I didn't come from anything. I'm immigrant from a third world country. This is a big opportunity and I lost one of my dearest friends two days before the audition. And that week, I had to help in planning a, a vigil and a funeral. And he was a beloved member of our marching band and of our school. He was so young, such a light. And I had um, a hundred kids under my leadership. As a kid myself, you know, how to agree and be strong for my kids being their leader, drum major, trying to help. But I still had that audition and I didn't know what to do. And I did something very similar to this. Just went at my piano, sang my heart out, prayed, talked to him up there, wondering what he would have me do. And in his voice I just heard, I heard you got this Chris. The spirit and the memories of the people that we lose in our lives never leave us. They're always here. And it's on us to keep their memories and their lives and their legacies going. 
I carry him and the many that I've loved with me they push me they strengthen me I know they're watching over me They believe in me, just like they believed in John. And if you're out there facing any tough decisions like this, wondering whether to keep believing in yourself to keep going, you've got this. Just keep. moving forward. I believe in you and you're not alone because I see you. Hey, whatever happens next, I'm here. I promise. Someday, on my 30th birthday. Hmm. I have to give context um, to my reaction to follow up on that story about my audition and if you guys ever want to hear the full story I'd love to share it with you I think it might be encouraging I did my audition in the middle of that hell I took everything in me I didn't feel prepared I didn't feel quite right I was very nervous and quite honestly, I had two monologues I had to do. It was a Skype audition, first time I ever used Skype. I basically bought a laptop that me and my mom didn't afford, but we knew we needed it. Uh, we bought it because we didn't have a webcam so that we could use Skype. <laughs> and my first monologue was not the best. It was fine, like it was literally just fine. <laughs> and then my second one after I finished delivering, it wasn't as good as I would have liked it. Um, the, the woman who is with the administrator, so there's um, the admissions coordinator that wanted me to audition for the school, who had convinced me to audition because quite honestly, I was not expecting to in any way because like I said, I came from nothing. <laughs> so there was no way in hell that I could afford going to New York City. <laughs> it was a dream, that was the dream, like maybe eventually I'd get to New York, but no way in hell did I see myself getting there and at 17 in high school from the middle of nowhere but she convinced me to audition and as I finish this monologue and I don't feel the most set of myself it's an older much older woman in a baseball cap and like a tracksuit like a velvet tracksuit and she's watching me and I think she's like the head of admissions um, because that's usually what it is if you're auditioning um, for like a school scholarship or things like that in college at the time. I was a senior at the time. I was 17, barely 17. And she just turns to me and she gives me a note, a directorial note. She tells me something on the lines of like, hey, I want us to run that second piece again. And I want you to breathe. So I want you to take a breath, think about who you're talking to. Think about how you feel. My second piece was a dramatic piece. It was very emotional. It was essentially a breakup monologue. And she's like, think about the boy that you're talking to. Take a breath. Just talk to him. You're just talking to him. And I deliver my monologue. 
and it felt so right everything it's a blur <laughs> like Jonathan mentions it's a blur but I remember finishing that piece and that woman looking at me and saying I have to tell you something I was like alright I'm like what's, what's going on she goes I really like you I like you I want to help you because I think you can be great and I have a brief interview with her and my admissions coordinator and she reiterates at the end you know what I really like you you know why I'm like why <laughs> again I am concealing every bit of everything in my life that's happening right now it's would not have been able to tell any of that was happening <laughs> but she goes I like you because you seem to really know what you want which at the time and still to this day was to act and to tell stories and she's like but you also seem like you got a good head on your shoulders like you're disciplined enough to actually make it you seem determined I can tell you are I really want you at our school because I really like you and I waited a couple of weeks and just like something like that so much so much was going on in my life I was just holding in and trying to figure out how to continue And I get a call again from my admissions coordinator. And that's when I heard that the woman who interviewed me, the adjudicator, wasn't the head of admissions. She was the owner and president of the whole school. That woman's name is Joan C. She has since past but at that point I realized the merit of the compliment that she paid me and that was one of my first Sondheims it really can happen like that sometimes and it is so beautiful when the universe and God just blesses you with a little bit of light in the midst of darkness it reminds you who you are because you're a light in the midst of darkness so be sure to keep shining I really wanted to be there I just Susan I know what are you going to do now I'm going to start the next Yay. I decided to take the job. I'm happy for you. Happy birthday. Aww. Aww. For the next one. Goodbye, Jonathan. Aww. The next one was Tick, Tick, Boom. After that, he went back to a project he'd started and put away called Rent. It ran on Broadway for 12 years. Jonathan never got to see it. The night before Rent's first public performance, he died from a sudden aortic aneurysm. He was 35 years old. Do we run our finger through the flame? I'm 
and that's what we've been watching. All right, we're going to cut OBS recording because I have had to pee for the past hour and a half, but I didn't want to cut. I have been holding this shit in for an hour and a half. It's part of why I couldn't cry earlier. I was focusing too much on my bladder. Okay, give me a moment. All right, guys, I finally went pee, which was fantastic and such a relief either way <laughs> all right guys that was tick tick boom oh my gosh oh my goodness gosh i had to step out to like one go pee but also to touch up my makeup because it wasn't as set as well as Encanto. so some things did a run but honestly that was the purpose of the makeup it wasn't set that well and also this movie made me cry more more than Encanto. surprisingly enough because it related to me more than in Canto, even though it's a movie about my own culture, but this is a movie about my art. So, yeah. Wow, I cannot commend Lin enough. He made so many fantastic directorial choices that just told this story in a way that, that thrives on film. If this was done in a, in a stage setting, Literally, that's what we watched, and I think it was so beautiful. I didn't know the history, so I didn't know that Tick, Tick, Boom is the name of the one-man monologue show, essentially, that Jonathan Larson did. I didn't know that that's what I was watching, and it was such a beautiful, like, conclusion to everything because it felt like, that's what I felt like from when it started, that I was watching a one one-man show, and and to see that this was his show. And to know that you can imagine exactly how the stage performance looked because we've experienced it, but through the medium of film, there's so much room for creativity, for stories to really flourish. In the same way that there's so much room for creativity, for stories to flourish, specifically in the medium of theater. So I love that someone like Lin Manuel Miranda understood that and took the creativity that he has brought into his musicals like Hamilton and In the Heights and took that into this new medium of film and actually gave us something that worked through film to tell us a story that was done through the stage. I love that so, so much. It honestly, so much of Jonathan Larson's story just hit me straight in the feels, in the heart, in my own life story, just as a struggling actress, <laughs> struggling actor in New York City, barely making it by, trying to pay my bills on the verge of losing homes and apartments and barely being able to buy food and having so many dear friends in that same struggle. Like it just, it's something that connected. If I keep looking away, it's because I'm looking at the the screen that has the TV, sh the, the film on, but just so much of it is so real. It's so much of our life stories, creatives, artists, actors, and just people in general. There's so much to John's story that can relate to so many. And I'm just one of the lovely people who got to experience it. I am so happy for Andrew Garfield. I am so happy for Andrew Garfield. I have waited so long para que ese chico tenga la recognition that he deserves and he's gonna get it. And I'm so happy. Honestly, why aren't more people talking about Tick, Tick, Boom? Like more people need to talk about Tick, Tick, Boom because it's so good. I absolutely loved that. It was an amazing time. I hope that you enjoyed watching it with me. I'm so grateful for you and all of your amazing support. That was absolutely amazing. I am so incredibly grateful I saw it. Honestly, again, mentioning, I have not seen Rent the musical ever, so please let me know. If you guys are interested in me watching Rent and talking about it and discussing all the different, like, 
aspects of it and things like that, particularly the movie, maybe ideally the original with Adina Menzel and Rosario Dawson and all those guys, because I know that more people tend to like that one. I would probably want to watch that one best. But if you guys are interested in seeing me check it out, please let me know in the comments down below. I hope that you had an amazing day. I hope that this made you smile. And I hope that you take care of yourself. Know that you deserve it, that you are worthy of love, happiness, success, and joy, and all the good things in life. So take care of yourself. And bye-bye.